what an RT does is we specialize in the pulmonary system and the cardiopulmonary system. Um, so anybody with any sort of airway issue or lung issue, they are going to be our patient. Our main priority is to make sure that there's a patent or open airway. So we assist with intubation. So we manage the ventilator. We suction the patient. We change different modes and different settings on the ventilator to help get the patient better. And then eventually, hopefully, we take the breathing tube out. Also, just have like normal floor patients where we are just giving inhalers and nebulized breathing treatments and medications to help open the airway, to mobilize any secretions. And we're also doing airway clearance therapies like IPV, metaneb, um, vest therapy. We have cystic fibrosis patients. <laughs>
boring same stuff. Um, so first of all, I guess, depending on your facility and how the training works, if you can work in all units or not, um, it depends what unit you're going to be in. So you can be working with adults, you could be with pediatrics, you could be in the NICU, uh, you could be in the emergency room. And from then on, it depends how your day is going to go. Um, but what an RT does is we specialize in the pulmonary system and the cardiopulmonary system. Um, so anybody with any sort of airway issue or lung issue, they are going to be our patient. Our main priority is to make sure that there's a patent or open airway. Um, so we assist with intubations, and that is the insertion of a breathing tube. And um, while they have the breathing tube, they are on, they're placed on a ventilator. And so we manage the ventilator. Um, we suction the patient. We change different um, modes and different settings on the ventilator to help get the patient better. And then eventually, hopefully, we take the breathing tube out. Um, and so that's a patient that's on a ventilator. We also just have like normal floor patients where we are just giving inhalers and nebulized breathing treatments and medications to help open the airway, to mobilize any secretions. And we're also doing airway clearance therapies like IPV, metaneb, um, vest therapy. We have cystic fibrosis patients. Um, yeah, it's just completely different where you work and what unit you work in. <laughs> we draw blood, uh, we attend any and all emergencies. It's just, it's such a, a thrilling and unique position that is just different every day. No, I love it. I am, um, I, breathing is so important. It's not something we think about because we just naturally do it. My mom had respiratory failure back in um, December of 2019. Oh. And, you know, since then it's kind of been a struggle figuring out how to help her breathe and keep her oxygen up. And so I'm a little familiar with um, some of the medications and things like that, but it's mm -hmm. such an important thing that, you know, if you can't breathe, you can't do anything. Like you can't exactly. function as, you know, you're just kind of sitting there if you can't have your breath. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I don't think we realize how simple it is until it's gone. And I think that's why a lot of people don't really know what a respiratory therapist is because you shouldn't really have to unless you've experienced like such problems with breathing with which, you know, hopefully and thankfully most of us don't experience that. But usually people are like, oh, I know what an RT is because their family member was on a ventilator or had some sort of respiratory issue. Uh, sorry to hear about your mom. Is she doing okay? Thanks, Gary. Uh, you know, Thanks, Gary. Uh, you know, it's a struggle. It's a struggle just trying to figure things out. I think my mom actually got COVID before people knew what COVID was. Oh, so no. in 19, she got really sick. And then I got really sick. And I was after five days, I was like, Mom, we got to go to urgent care because I know I feel terrible. And you're a lot older than me. You can't be I got it from you. So we went to urgent care. And then right away, they're like, your mom's 33%. That, that was her oxygen. 33 oh. How she's awake most people pass out at like 65 or something yeah that's crazy yeah and her lips were blue but I was so out of it that I didn't even acknowledge or even process the fact that her lips were blue and she was not doing well because I was so sick and myself so um they ended up just taking her by ambulance directly across the street they wouldn't let us drive her or anything there like by ambulance took her over to the er, to the emergency room and then went like an hour she was moved uh to the ICU and had with respiratory failure and it was again it was before people knew what COVID was so she probably would have gone on like a ventilator at that time but they treated her like she had um like pneumonia and the flu really bad so they didn't end up doing that to her but she um was in the hospital for nine days in the ICU and um she's you know she's been recovering ever since but it's more it, it was in Colorado where the altitude is also really high so struggling oh. with air oxygen uh yeah. now she's just kind of living with the fear of wanting to go home for the holidays and not being able to show she can actually do it and there's a lot of things you have to think about too like can you fly in a plane can how is how is altitude going to affect your breathing you know so yeah. it's a pretty it's a I I absolutely adore you for what you do and appreciate you guys so much because it really is something that um, without our breath, like we have no life and um, it's such an important job. And I'm so glad we're coming up on respiratory therapy week and <laughs> we can just say thank you for all that you do, because I know Gary, especially 
uh, you just kind of beginning your journey right at the kind of crux of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. It's been crazy. The fire and <laughs> had to go nuts for the last two and a half years. So what is, has, have things come down for you? Um, I'm sure you've learned a lot very quickly. Can you talk a little bit about what, what the last few years has been like for you? Um, well, you know, I'm so, I'm, for, I'm so grateful I had six months of experience because I feel like if I had like three weeks, I would have, I don't know if I would have made it, you know, I would have been so traumatized, I think. Um, it was definitely still super scary and like traumatic, especially in the beginning, you know, I think we forget that like, we had no idea what this was. All we knew is that people were dying. And then, you know, even eventually like all the stores were closed, like roads were empty. Like, I think we forget that like, we really went through like a really crazy period of a pandemic, you know? Um, but yeah, in the beginning, it was just really scary. We didn't want to show any skin. Um, I ended up working at three different hospitals throughout the pandemic. So I got to see how it was uh, at different phases, even when I was at my first hospital and it was super crazy. At the hospital I work at now, they were hardly even having COVID patients at that time. So it really just hit different areas and waves. Um, and of course, after I got hired, then it really came and <laughs> got crazy at my current hospital. Um, but yeah, I think I really just got to learn a lot and experience a lot, especially on my own. Um, because, you know, in these rooms, like if there's a normal code blue or something, there's like 12 people in a room, you know, like four nurses and a doctor and um, everybody. And during COVID, it's literally just you, a doctor and a nurse. There's just three of you, you know, you don't have that extra help. Um, so yeah, I think it was just obviously scary, but also crazy growth happened. Um, I feel like I've been doing this for like 10 years, you know? Um, yeah, it's definitely not something that I would want to go through again, but thankfully our COVID numbers are down now. Um, at my current hospital, we have less than 20. So it'll, we're definitely not seeing like crazy um, ventilator intubated patients who are dying anymore, which is really nice. Um, and I think in huge part, that's because most people are vaccinated, so. Yeah, I just, I can't even imagine like all of the things that you've seen and all the, just you trying to do your job and be there and help and save lives. And then at the same time, knowing that you're putting yourself at risk and also your loved ones at risk. So, yeah. you know, that just, just, I know a lot of people would, would be concerned about having to come home after, you know, being on shift because with COVID, it's like, you didn't know you could, you could be, get infected and spread it. And so I know that, um, and that was a really, really hard time. And thankfully that things are calming down, I think all the way around and people who get COVID isolated and it's, it doesn't seem to be as severe for most people unless you're autoimmune compromised or you're older or you just get it really bad and you can't fight it. Uh, and that whole fear of coming home was so scary. I really thought that like, I was going to give it to someone, but um, thankfully all of that is gone now. <laughs> Hopefully we never have to experience that again in our lifetime. <laughs> into that <laughs> I'm into that okay Gary so I want to ask you a question um if you could go back and tell your younger self something or give some sort of advice to yourself something hmm. you know now that you wish you'd known what is that you would maybe tell yourself I think it would have been nice to have like thought of respiratory first um just to have done it sooner um I'm so grateful that I went into it and for the things that it has got me in life. I feel like I have achieved a lot since becoming an RT and I think it would have been, it would have been obviously nice to like have that money and that financial stability sooner. But also I think for anybody like students who might be struggling in their program, because I remember when I was a student, it was just scary. The thought of this big medical program my gosh, like, can I do this? I wasn't a straight A, like AP classes. You know, I didn't do all of that in high school um, because I wasn't trying to go into medicine. And so I think there was that fear of, can I do this? And I think if you just treat it like, I tell people this all the time, but just treat it like any other class. It's not some big, scary medical program. It's not something so hard you can't do like doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and lab techs and pharmacists, like we're all just normal people um, who just, you know, took that leap of faith and studied. 
And you just kind of have to like believe in yourself and throw all those doubts and nerves and anxiety out the window because you can do it. It's just going to take time. So just have faith in yourself. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I could just like relax a little bit more, you know, yeah. like just have faith. It's going to work out, do your best. And if you don't succeed the first time, it's okay. Try again, keep going. And it'll all work out in the end as long as you don't give up, you know, and let, let the fear win. You can't let the fear win. Yeah. I wish I was like that when I was pursuing acting too, just having more confidence and just doing it, like not caring, you know, I think that would have helped too when I was younger. <laughs> right. Especially when you're, I feel like when you get older, it's a little easier to kind of just throw, throw it away more and not really care and just do your thing. Oh, but yeah. younger, you're just more self-conscious. You're not really as self-confident, self-assured, you know, yeah. you think everyone else has it figured out. And then as you get older, you realize Nobody. Nobody has to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we're all just winging it and living life. And you know. <laughs> well, I love, um, I want to talk a little bit about your creative outlet because obviously you come from like a performance kind of background, theater, yeah. film. You obviously like to make people laugh, entertain. What does that expression do for you? Because I know obviously in your career, you, it's not always a fun day, right? You know, you see things happen so is this kind of like an outlet for you to express those feelings you're going through you know I think because acting and editing and filmmaking has always been and will always be a passion of mine it gives me you know it gives me an outlet to be able to do that while also still working in healthcare and um I feel like I don't know I try and find ways to make my content relatable Obviously, it's more geared toward medicine because it is a medical account, but I, I also try and have it relatable to anybody, really, you know, like even people come up to me and say like, oh my God, that was so funny. And they're not even in healthcare. Um, and I also try not to make it too like niche with respiratory because I want it to, you know, be for a broader audience. Um, but yeah, it's fun to put out content that makes people laugh. And I think, like you said, in healthcare, we don't always have the brightest days or see the best moments um you know sometimes we do and we see patients like go from super sick to super healthy and walk out of the hospital and it's amazing and then but a lot of the times you know everyone's really critical and dying and um I think you have to find ways to express yourself and to also relieve any of that and I think that it's also helpful for people to see funny content on their feed instead of just a lot of medical jargon or, um, you know, I love to teach. Um, so any way to make people have like a better day, I think is really nice. I, I love watching it. And I think um, you're kind of just finding creative way to express what you're going through mm -hmm. in a way that is relatable, but also makes you understand that it's stressful and, and like the things that you do are hard, but you're still coming out with like a smile and a positive attitude about like getting through it, I think, and finding a way to kind of navigate those things so I appreciate your content so much but I I being around um people who are so delicate and vulnerable in their state of life mm -hmm. how does that affect you in your day to, day to life like do you think about time in a different way or has it brought a new appreciation for enjoying every moment because we're not guaranteed anything I mean has it kind of just changed your perspective oh for sure I mean I think personally I think sometimes like for example when I'm with my husband I can be a little morbid like I'm like oh my god hopefully we don't get a car accident on the way home or like you know what I mean like hopefully like oh I wouldn't ride that electric scooter like I've had patients who you know and like so I definitely um sometimes it's hard for me to enjoy certain things and I definitely like triple think about like if that's like a safe thing to do um because I do come across, you know, so many patients who have done this or that. But at the same time, like, I like it. Um, I think it helps you be aware of your surroundings and it helps you appreciate life because life is so short. Um, that's another reason why we got married during COVID because everybody was dying. And it was like, what if we don't have this chance again? Um, so it's like things like that, that has definitely, um, you know, made me think about certain things and appreciate certain things in life. And also when you're with patients and they're so vulnerable and um, sick and, you know, sometimes they're grumpy, um, but you have to think like nobody wants to be here. You know, nobody wants to be sitting in a hospital bed um, and you have to remind yourself like 
these people aren't feeling good, you know? Um, and so I just try and treat everyone with kindness and positivity. And um, I just love like making my patients day, you know, and hearing like, oh my God, you've been the nicest one. Or thank you so much for getting this. Like nobody helped me get an extra blanket. You know, I don't know. It's just like little things. Like I want to try and make them have the best day that they can because like I said, they're sick and they don't want to be here. Um, but yeah, and I try not to take the sadness home because I feel like I would really just like sulk and like negativity and, you know, like a depression. I, mean, I, I have, an, I have another sick parent. I just, I'm full of sick parents. My dad, he is, um, fighting cancer and, um, uh, he's, he got out of the hospital because he had a really bad infection and it went into his kidneys and all this. And now he's in this like physical therapy. It's like an extension of the hospital where, because he lost his ability to talk, walk, like everything. It was almost like he had a stroke, but he didn't. Oh, yeah. um, so breathing exercises, like walking, like physical therapy, all that stuff. And yeah. there was this one nurse who was a male nurse. It was like the only male in the whole facility. Mm -hmm. And um, you actually kind of remind me of him a lot. Like uh, he's- oh, he's like 60 something um, <laughs> and actually it looks similar uh and he just made a connection with my dad just by giving him a hard time though my you mm -hmm. know get up man you could you know just whatever kind of give him like pushing my dad's buttons a little bit and yeah. my dad really uh really took to it you know and so he's like where is he where is he is it gonna be in today and uh -oh. it, it made me feel so good because I'm like there's somebody there that my dad is bantering with and I've never seen him more um, when I was there and uh, visiting, I never seen him more like alert and awake and just kind of wanting to engage with this person. So healthcare workers are so important. Um, it's so important. And I just have to say thank you because um, we appreciate so much that you're there for our loved ones in a way that we can't be. And it brings so much comfort to us knowing that like you're caring and taking care of them. So Oh, thank you. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I think, you know, I think that it's really important, you know, like people don't have, especially during COVID, like nobody could visit, you know? And so I would just like try and talk to them and like, you know, tell them like, hold on, you know, and stuff like that. Um, I hold their hands and, you know, it's like, cause they don't have that. And I feel like there's so many people who still work in healthcare who unfortunately lost that sense of care, you know, like they could kind of care less or they just go there for the paycheck. And um, it's like, why are you, why are you working in healthcare? You know what I mean? Like we're supposed to care. <laughs> um, so I always try and like do that with all of my patients, whether they're, you know, they aren't even there really, um, neurologically or if they're sedated um, I just think it's important to talk to them and let them know that you're there you know uh, but yeah so thank you for saying thank you <laughs> I know it's not easy to have a family member in the hospital or anything so thanks Gary no I I just um I noticed that too I just think there's sometimes like a desensit almost desensitized because you guys go through so much you see so much yeah you know all of that so I just think it's it's burnout sometimes you know because you can only take so much and like if you keep seeing something over and over again eventually it's not gonna impact you as much you know but yeah you know, it's so empathetic and we're really grateful for people like you who can feel so deeply and be there for our loved ones so <laughs> Thank you. I tell my husband all the time, I'm just so empathetic. <laughs> like, sorry, I'm emotional. <laughs> so that's cute that you noticed that. <laughs> also makes you a good actor though, because yeah. <laughs> but I find that, I, I really find that a lot of um, healthcare workers are super empathetic and also have a creative outlet because it takes a certain heart and a certain kind of person to want to go be mm -hmm. there and help strangers, you know, yeah. and have these difficult days and be there for them in, in these really intimate ways. Um, mm. It's so beautiful. So, so beautiful. And um, yes, I just, I, I love what you do and I'm, I'm really, really thankful for you. Um, do you, yeah. for like dealing with your mental health, do you like, do you talk to your husband a lot? Do you, how do you kind of like, pro, do you have a diary or a journal or anything? Or do you just kind of let it go when you're, when you're done? 
Um, you know, I think during COVID it was really hard. Um, but now I try not to really take anything home with me. Um, there's obviously certain scenarios that like stick with me as, you know, during my drive home or like, did I do this? Could I have done enough? But, um, yeah, I think it, it really helps having my husband not in healthcare just because you would think if he was in healthcare, we could like relate more about it and talk about it more. But because he's not, he can bring in like a different perspective than what I can see. And also because he's not, he doesn't always like to hear everything. So um, it can be helpful in that aspect. But yeah, I think just, you know, talking about it with my coworkers too is helpful. And then making some of my content can be really helpful. You know, sometimes if I had like a, a bad patient experience or a bad family experience or like a bad nurse or doctor experience, I just put that into my my next reel, you know, <laughs> and I can do it because I'm not exactly calling someone out, you know, but I am in my own way and um, people can relate to it. So yes, absolutely. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining our crafting wellness podcast. It was such a pleasure having you on. I would love if you could just tell people where to find you on social media. Um, if you could also verbally say where to find you just for people listening so that they can find it um, as well so you can find me it's at gary rt g-a-r-r-y-r-t on instagram and on youtube and i have a blog GaryRT.com, and then on tiktok it's hello gary so h-e-l-l-o-g-a-r-r-y <laughs>